Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I am here today to do my June haul video. Now, again, I apologise for the state of my bedroom. I mean, I haven't tidied it in such a long time. Why I change the habits for a lifetime, guys? I'm never going to have a tidy bedroom, I don't think. Um, so yeah, I apologise that this is looking rubbish and I'm looking particularly rubbish, but I thought I would do a June haul for you before I jet off on holiday and... I don't mean jet off because I'm not going on a plane, but I'm going to the Lake District for a couple of days, um, four nights I think. Um, so I thought I would film this before kind of June gets underway completely. Um, I have got a lot of books I've acquired recently, um, and they're all books I'm hoping to kind of read in June. Unlikely that they're all going to get read, but they are a selection of books that I've bought. Um, and some that have been gifted to me and some that I've got from publishers that I'm kind of really excited about so I thought I would haul them for you today. I am going to try and make this video quite short compared to my last video which was about 25 minutes long. No one likes watching someone talk for that long um, so I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. So like I say this is a haul of books that I've bought. Um, recently I left my job at Waterstones and before I left I abused my discount card and I bought a lot of books um, because I was like I'm never going to get this discount again I must use it to my full advantage so I bought quite a few books with that. I've also been to the library and picked up a few books um, actually I reserved some books from the library that I've picked up. I've also got some books that were gifted to me um, by my lovely boss when I left work and I've also got a few books from publishers so Without further ado, let's get into this haul. I thought I would start with my library books because there's only three of them. Um, so the first one that I've got from the library is Remix by Non Pratt. Now if you don't know, Non Pratt wrote um, a book called Trouble which was released last year I think. Um, and I haven't actually read that one yet. Um, the cover is beautiful, I don't think it's on my shelf up here, I think it's downstairs. Um, but it's like um, blue with pink. I think it's it's a really gorgeous cover and it's basically about a story of a boy and a girl I think who I think she gets pregnant and they're teenagers and they're kind of not sure what to do so I really wanted to read that book and I never actually got around to reading it so I'm excited that I also have her second novel I might kind of read them at the same like read them together um read one after the other so this is her second novel called Remix um this is um about three days two best mates and one music festival um and I think they kind of it's about two friends who one of them's really for being dumped by the love of her life and one of them is bored about hearing that it's time to change the record um so i think yeah it's about people going on to to a concert a festival or whatever um and yeah i'm excited because she is said to be a really fantastic oh there we go i don't know if you can see it there but there is the trouble cover on the back um yeah she's said to be a fantastic author for ya and people have loved her first book and people are raving about this so i cannot wait to get into this so that is remix by non pratt the second book i got from the library is a book that has just recently come out in paperback um but I've got it in hardback because I did the paperback wasn't yet in the library so I requested the hardback and it is Running Girl by Simon Mason. Now if you haven't seen the paperback cover for this then it is gorgeous. It is orange and white, um, kind of like a maze I think around it. I can't quite picture it in my mind but it's really really beautiful. Um, I'm not so keen on the hardback cover, I think this is quite, I dare I say it, disgusting. Um, it just doesn't scream read me, it doesn't seem very enticing to a young adult audience at all. But I love the sound of it, it's about um, a Garvey Smith who has the highest IQ ever recorded at Marsh Academy, but he has the lowest ever grades. What's the point anyway? Life sucks, nothing ever happens. Until Chloe Dow's body is pulled from a pond. D.I. Singh is already on the case, ambitious, uptight, methodical, he's determined to solve the mystery and get promoted. He doesn't need any assistance from notorious slacker Smith, or does he? So it sounds like it's kind of about mystery, about a girl who gets found in a pond um, and this police officer is trying to solve the case but this guy called Garvey Smith, he wants to get involved and he thinks he has the keys to it. So I'm excited to read this one. It sounds like it's going to be an interesting book and obviously because it's published in paperback a lot of people are getting into it and kind of picking it up now. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. My hair, I just washed my hair and it's dripping everywhere which is not good. Um, and the final book that I got from the library is a, oh this is annoying. I'm so professional. Um, the last book I got from the library is a book, again, that was published recently. This is not a YA book, this is an adult novel, um, and it, I think, is her first novel? No, I'm telling a lie. No, this is like her sixth novel. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's called All the Little Pieces by Gillian Hoffman. Now this um, is said, it um, follows in the best-selling footsteps of Patricia Cornwall and Karen Slaughter, and I love Patricia Cornwall so, so much. I absolutely adore her novels. So I'm kind of excited that this is following in the footsteps and kind of along the same vein as um, Patricia Cornwall. The blurb 
is, um, well, I'll, I'll read you like the tagline. It says, "Some she could have stopped a crime, she could have saved a life, but she did nothing. Now she's going to pay the price. And it says one murder, two witnesses and a family torn apart. So I'm really excited and I love the cover as well. Um, and I'm also really excited because if you guys don't know, there's a fantastic website called lovereading.co.uk. And if you head on there, create an account, it's free to do, it's free to set up and everything. You then have the chance to download opening extracts from certain books. Um, well actually most books that are on the website you can download opening extracts for and this is one of the books I've read the opening extract for and I loved it so much that I was like I have to read it so if you kind of are like me and you sometimes see books and you judge them by the cover or the blurb and you think this is amazing but you kind of want to read a little bit before you either commit to buying it or commit to you know kind of finding yourself a copy it's always good to go to Love Reading and read the first extract or the opening chapter and actually work out whether that's something you can get on board with and I did that with that one and I loved it so that is why I borrowed that one from the library so yeah I'll leave a link in the description box below to Love Reading and go check it out because it's a fantastic website I'm sure most of you have heard of it already but yeah if not go check it out so the second pile of books I've got to show you are books that I have been gifted. These are two books that my lovely boss bought me um, when I left work, um, and she kind of said this. Yeah, she kind of said there's one that I there's one that I really wanted, and there's one that she said that's her favourite book ever, and I should read it. So I was like, yep, yeah, okay, I totally am gonna listen to your opinion because every book she recommends me is always fantastic. So she bought me Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, and I ashamedly have not read this before in my life, but it was her or it is her favourite book. Um, so she bought me a copy and she was like, you must read it. So I'm excited to read this. I'm not amazing again at reading classics. I find them quite difficult to get into. The language sometimes confuses me. But I'm hoping that with Wuthering Heights I can plough through it and really enjoy it because it has come highly recommended. So that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And the second book she bought me is a book that I really wanted. I've read this book before and I already own a copy of this book. But it was recently republished with a gorgeous new cover. And I saw it when it came into the shop and I was like, oh my god, I need this. And she was like, right, that's it. I am buying it for you and it is Before I Die by Jenny Downham. If you've never read this book before then you must read this book. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's about a girl called Tessa who's 16 and she's dying and she creates this bucket list of things that she wants to do um, and the first thing she wants to do is have sex and you know as any teenager would do if you were 16 and you would die I think one of the things that you would want to do is experience what it's like to have sex so it's just a beautiful kind of love story mixed in with all of that kind of teenage angst set against this backdrop of this person who's dying and it's just absolutely stunning and this was published before The Fault in Our Stars and in all honesty I think this book kind of it's not better than The Fault in Our Stars it's different but I, I think it covers the same topics really really well um, so yeah definitely worth giving that one a read so that's before I die by Jenny Downham. Um, I don't know what else to show you next I think I'll just start looking into my bag of stuff um, okay let me do a haul of the books I've got from publishers because I think there's only two yes there are only two so the two books I've got from publishers recently the first one is called Nothing But Trouble by Matt Kane. now he wrote a book um, people be quiet please sorry People are dropping their kids off at school and it's loud. Um, he wrote um, a book last year called Shot Through the Heart, I think it was. Yeah, Shot Through the Heart. This is his second novel. I never got to read his first novel, um, but this is his second novel. It's kind of like a summary, kind of chiclety saga drama kind of thing. It's about Lola Grant, who is the hottest pop star in Britain, and she's about to go global. But behind the music, her addiction to bad boys is taking her personal life in a dangerous direction. When it comes to men, Lola just can't stay away from trouble, and her self-control is pushed to the limit when she meets her handsome new drummer, Jake Hunter. So I think it's kind of like um, a love story mixed in with kind of what it's like to be a pop star and global star. Um, and that was sent to me from, by Pam McMillan, so thank you to Pam for that one, I'm really looking forward to this. Definitely excited to try out a new author as I've never read any of his work before, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And the second book I was sent was from Black Swan, um, and it's called Take Me With You, One Summer, One Life Changing Journey by Catherine Ryan Hyde. Now, I've never heard of this book before, I wasn't expecting it again, both of these books were unsolicited proof copies, they weren't ones that I requested or asked for. Um, this is published on the 16th of July, so actually very soon. Um, Seth and his brother Henry haven't had the most stable of upbringings. Their father has been in and out of jail and their mother took off years ago and hasn't been seen since. Life is constantly uncertain but a twist of fate could be just what they need. August stopped drinking the day his son died. While on a journey that's very close to his heart, a breakdown leaves him stranded in a small town and at the mercy of the local mechanic, Seth and Henry's father. 
but then August is presented with an offer he doesn't expect to take the two boys with him for a summer and pay no charges for the repairs. As the unlikely trio set out on their road trip, the most unlikely forgettable friendship begins to take shape. Sorry, the most unlikely unforgettable friendship begins to take shape. So that sounds quite cute. Um, sounds like it's going to be quite a little uh, journey, that one. I've never read anything by Catherine Weinheim before. I don't think I recognise her name. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's like a list of books that she's written before. Um, no, there's none that I actually recognise. But yeah, I recognise her name. So I'm excited to read that one and I will... Uh, let you guys know whether I enjoyed that one or not. So that is that one, that is the last book I got from publishers. Um, now I'm going to show you books I've bought. I'm going to start with the books I bought from Waterstones. Um, the first book that I got, um, and I have to say with these as well, these weren't books I kind of went in there knowing I wanted to buy. I was just kind of like, I'm just going to pick up books that I've never really heard of before or books that I kind of wouldn't normally read because I'm so used to kind of sticking to the same genres and the same authors and the same kind of pretty covers. I was like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to pick up books that I wouldn't normally read and see what happens. So the first book I picked up was called The Haunted Bookshop by Christopher Morley. Now this is um, a really interesting book. I think it was first written in like the 1920s. Yeah, it was first published in 1919. So it's not a new book by, in, you know, by this, any stretch of the imagination. It's very old. Um, and it's about um, a bookshop where volumes disappear and reappear on the shelves. Um, but the ghosts of literature aren't the only mysterious visitors in Roger Mifflin's haunted bookshop. Um, I don't want to read the whole blurb because it's quite a long one, but it's about a, a man who works in this haunted bookshop and it kind of tells the story of this bookshop and kind of what goes on in the bookshop. And I'm really excited because working in a bookshop myself, I know what it's like, I know what bookshops are like working in. And apparently he, um, this has a deep respect for the art of bookselling and as much flair for drama as romance. Christopher Morley has created a lively humorous tale for book lovers everywhere. And you know, people who love books love bookshops, so I'm excited to read this and interested to kind of see whether I'm going to enjoy it. So that is a haunted bookshop that I bought. The second book that I got when I went to Waterstones to abuse my discount card. Okay, this is quite a typical Laura choice. It is a new YA novel called, called Because You'll Never Meet Me. Again, I've I never heard of this before I picked it up. Um, and it sounds a little bit odd, if I'm honest. It's basically about these two boys who can never meet um, because one of them would die. Um, I think one of them is like allergic to electricity and one of them is like statically charged. It's an odd concept. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, bit, a little bit odd. But they start writing to each other, um, and because they're um, recluses in society, they develop a fierce bond through these letters. Um, but one of the boys reveals a key to like their secret past, um, and their friendship then becomes quite tested, and they face something they never thought they would face together. Um, it's a story of impossible friendship and hope from a brilliant new writer. So I'm excited about this one. Um, a little bit confused by the kind of the idea of it and the concept, but I'm hoping it will work. So yeah. That is Because You'll Never Meet Me by Leah Thomas. The third book that I bought from Waterstones is a book called Suicide Nights and Beautiful Girls, which is one that I've wanted to read for ages. Again, not a very um, an obvious choice for me. Definitely a book that I wanted to read, a YA contemporary novel about a girl who dies. Um, two girls are best friends and they kind of separate, they kind of don't you know what you know when it's like when friendships kind of dissipate and you kind of go in separate directions um one of them dies and everybody thinks it was a suicide i think it's kind of set up to look like a suicide but the girl who used to be her friend is certain that it was a murder and kind of she believes it's her job and she owes it to her friend to prove that that is what happened so it's kind of like a mystery kind of really exciting idea i love the sound of it um it's not potentially the most um unique of ideas there's a lot of books i've read in the past where suicides have been set up and things like that but it's the way that the author chooses to present that and portray it and kind of the way that they set the story up so i'm really excited to see how this works so i'm really excited about that one and the next book i bought from more stones i'm going to have to fish out of my bag because i'm currently reading it it is um oh, she says um the red notebook by Ant antoine I'd, my french pronunciation is appalling antoine lorraine I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's called The Red Notebook and it, I'm about halfway through I suppose and it is absolutely beautiful. It tells the story of this bookseller who um, is walking down the street one day and he goes to um, down this side street and he finds this um, like bag that's just been left 
um, and he kind of goes through it because he's like, oh my god, I need to reunite this bag with the owner. And inside the bag he finds no purse, no phone, and he thinks, okay, this must be a bag that's been stolen and has been left um, because the, the, the robber or whoever it was that stole the so the bag doesn't want the rest of the stuff so he takes the, um this bag home with him because he wants to try and find the owner he takes it to the police station but the police are too busy dealing with other things and they say come back tomorrow so he takes the bag home he starts going through it starts looking through all the things that are in there and he starts to try and paint a picture of the person that owns this bag um, and then he stumbles across his red notebook inside the bag which kind of tells him a lot about this person and he starts to kind of have this kind of romantic attachment to her but not in the sense that it's kind of um because he knows who he who she is but he kind of just has this like romantic idea of her and i think it's such a beautiful way of telling a story because you know it's falling in love without knowing without ever meeting somebody but knowing things about them that they were, might not want you to know if you first met them um so it's a really beautiful story and yeah i'm really loving that one at the moment i'm gonna have to uncross my legs before i die um ow <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's that one. Um, yeah, that is all the books I've bought from Waterstones. Well, the next books I'm going to show you are books that I have bought online. I know, naughty me, you shouldn't really buy books online, but sometimes you just cannot help yourself. Um, I went on to wordry.co.uk or wordry.com. Um, they are an online book selling company. They're not affiliated with Amazon. You know, they're not kind of that kind of angry people that make me angry at Amazon. They are... Um, I think they're kind of, they're an independent online bookshop, so, you know, I'm giving money to people that are slightly better than Amazon, and I can't get comfortable now. This is not good. This is bad, Laura. Um, right, so I'll show you the books that I have got from Wordry. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. Um, yeah, seven. So the first one is actually in this bag. The first one I got is The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes, which won the Man Booker Prize in 2011. I have never wanted to read any of the Man Booker winners before because none of them have actually made me excited. I was just bored by the kind of idea of literary highbrow fiction. Um, but I read the blurb of this and I was like, actually, do you know what? This sounds kind of cool. And I read the first couple of pages and I kind of liked it. Um, so this is about Tony Webster and his clique first met Adrian Finn at school. Sex hungry and book hungry, they would navigate the girl as sick form together, trading in affections, in jokes, rumours and wit. Maybe Adrian was a little more serious than the others, certainly more intelligent, but they all swore to stay friends for life. Now Tony is retired, he's had a career and a single marriage and a calm divorce. He certainly never tried to hurt anybody. Memory though is imperfect, it can always throw up surprises as a lawyer's letter is about to prove. So I love the sound of that, sounds very intriguing, not too much giving it away and I read, like I say, I read the first few pages and I like the writing style so I'm excited to read that one. So that is The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. The second book I bought is a very odd version of this book. I didn't quite realise that it was going to be so big and thin and grotesque if I'm honest. I do not like this book in the slightest um but it is a book and i'm going to read it and it is called 84 charing cross road by helen humph i'm sure most book lovers have heard of this it is a collection of letters that were written to um a bookshop in charing cross from um a person in uh new york and it kind of tells us they kind of communicate through these letters and it turns into kind of a love story and it's a really gorgeous little book um again i'm not quite sure why they sent me this copy i must have just ordered the most ridiculously ridiculous copy of this book ever it's so thin and just like so floppy but i'm hoping i'll enjoy it i'm sure it's the right story inside it but yeah i would have preferred a different copy but yes that is that one i must not be fussy about books um the third book that i bought from them again this kind of came and i was a bit disappointed this is the one thing i hate about shopping online is that you can't tell what it's going to be until it arrives um it's a tiny paperback it's not um the normal size of paperback it is tiny it's like one of the, the small so it's you know shorter and uh less wide um and it is called high fidelity by nick hornby um when i was buying books i was trying to buy books that were on lists of things that you should read before you die or books that um I haven't read that I should have read because I kind of go through my life reading books like teen fiction and YA fiction and as much as I love them sometimes I kind of feel a little bit left out because I'm like do you know what I really need to read these classics I really need to read the books that people like lots of people love so this is one on the list um, and obviously it's been turned into a film I don't think I've seen the film um, I might have seen bits of it but I don't think I've seen it in full um, so this is about Rob um, he keeps a list of uh, 
hang on. Do you know your desert island all-time top five most memorable split-ups? Rob does, he keeps a list of facts, but Laura isn't on it, even though she's just become his latest ex. He's got his life back, you see. He can do what he wants when he wants, like listen to whatever music he likes, look up the girls that are on his list, and generally behave as if Laura never mattered. But Rob finds he can't move on, he's stuck in a really deep groove and it's called Laura. Soon he's asking himself some big questions about love, about life, and about why we choose to share ours with people we do. So that's cool, and there's a character called Laura, yay, I'm a Laura, so excited to read that one. I'm very conscious about the fact that this video is now 20 minutes long, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry, I'm going as fast as I can. The next book I bought um, is a collection of short stories called The Portable Virgin by Anne Enright. Now this is a book I saw when I went to City Books in Brighton, and I saw it on the shelf, and I thought that looks awesome, and I kind of started reading the first story and I really enjoyed it. But I looked at the back and I was like, hmm, £8.99, I'm not going to buy it for £8.99, I'm going to see if I can get it online for cheaper. And then I got home and I was trying to remember the title and I just couldn't remember. I could just remember that it had The Virgin in the title. So I spent hours trolling through Google and Amazon just typing in The Virgin trying to find the title of this book. And a lot of strange things came up. So in future I'm going to write down titles when I see them. Um, but yeah, this is called The Portable Virgin and it's kind of a collection of short stories um, about what it's like to be a woman. Um, and kind of exciting little things like that. Um, it doesn't actually have a blurb, but there's lots of reviews on the back kind of saying, a great new Irish talent which we're bound to enjoy again and again, um, introduces a new voice in Irish fiction, quirky, submersive, original wit and an imaginative and linguistic fluency which must be interpreted as a consolidation of a new literary maturity. So I like this. Um, it was published in 2007, so it's not brand new, but um, I just thought the cover was really nice. I really like the cover. I don't know why there's a shadow on the book, but yeah, um, really like the cover, so definitely excited to read that one. The next book I got is a non-fiction book, which um, is a book that I kind of have not sure I want to read because it could be quite triggering um, for someone like me. But it is called History of a Suicide, My Sister's Unfinished Life by Jill Bilowski, and it's about a um, but it's a true life story. Um, on the night of April the 15th, 1990, Jill Bawalski's 21-year-old sister Kim came home from a bar in downtown Cleveland. She argued with her boyfriend on the phone, then she went into the garage, climbed into her mother's car, turned on the ignition and fell asleep. Those are the simple facts, but the act of suicide is anything but simple. In a remarkable work of literary non-fiction, Bilowski recreates with unsparing honesty her sister's inner life and, in doing so, opens a window on the nature of suicide itself, especially the impact on those who remain behind. Combining Kim's diaries with family history and memoir, drawing on the works of doctors and psychologists, as well as writers from Melville to Plath, History of a Suicide is a stunning and compassionate exploration of human fra fra There's a fly. Human frailty and strength that brings a crucial and all too rarely discussed subject out of the shadows. I just think that sounds incredible and I mean the cover is just stunning and I just really want to read this but again it, it, it's not going to be an easy read at all especially for somebody like me who you know suffers from depression and has been through dark moments in my life where suicide has been on my mind and I think things like this really are enlightening and really important to read so I'm really excited to read well okay excited is the wrong word but I'm really intrigued and interested to read that one. Um, and this is the American edition. I don't know if we have an English edition yet. I think it might be only in hardback in England. But yeah, so that is that one. And then the final book. Oh no, I missed one from publishers. I've got another book that I got from publishers. Um, the new Chrissy Wambi book called A Proper Family Adventure. Again, unsolicited, sent from, to me from Hodder. Um, this is following the same family. that I think we had um, A Proper Family Christmas and um, A Proper Family Holiday. I think this is A Proper Family Adventure. So it follows the same family. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that one, so thank you to Hodder for that one. Um, but the final book that I bought from Wiredry is a book that I am literally so excited about. I've never been more excited about a book for a long time. Um, again, this is a book that I read the first kind of chapter of online, and I was like, yes, yes, I can, I can, I need this book in my life, I, this is a book that I can read. Um, and it is called Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. This is the American hardback um, I think it's quite gorgeous. I'm I'm not like completely sold on it, but I love kind of like the the, the strange like it's almost like it's been watercolored. Um, it's a really gorgeous kind of idea of a cover. I'm not sure I love it, but the the story sounds amazing. Um, it's about a girl who is schizophrenic, and it's kind of a look at um her life and kind of follows her in her teenage years so it's, you know it's a YA novel but it's really kind of focused on the idea of schizophrenia which I'm really excited about because as anybody knows I love books about mental health so 
I'm so excited about this. Um, and the little blurb says, let's play 20 questions. Okay, but I asked the questions this time. Fine. If I guess it before five, I'll be really disappointed. The corners of his lips twisted up into a smile and he said, don't insult me. Are you alive? Yes. Do you live here? Yes. Do I know you? Yes. Did I make you up? And it follows the story of this girl who doesn't know that she's made this boy up. Um, and yeah. It's just beautiful, so I cannot wait to read that one. Um, and that, I think, is everything. Um, before I start thinking that I've left something out, I'm pretty sure that is everything that I wanted to haul for you today. I am sorry this video has turned out to be quite long. I said I was going to make it shorter, but it's turning out to be longer than my last one. Huge apologies for that, but well done again if you've made it all the way to the end of the video. You are awesome, and well done for having such patience to watch videos that are made by such an amateur like me. Um, so I want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic July of reading. Um, we have a lot of amazing books that are coming out. A lot of books are already out that we can read. Um, these books that I've hauled today, I'm all excited about all of them. Um, I just can't wait to get started reading. Um, once I finish packing today for my holiday tomorrow, I'm going to go and sit in the garden if the sun is still shining and I'm going to do some reading. So I hope you all have a lovely July and I will see you again very soon with another video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!